The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to start the show like we usually do, looking at the German DAX, starting out with the 60-minute chart. You can see we bounced off that 1.618 number. Almost made the 61% retracement last night, but uh, didn't quite do it. That was uh, around 2.40 in the morning, as Tommy O'Brien told us on his update, and the market's been selling off uh, since then. We'll cover the stock market uh, in just a bit. Uh, after we finish the DAX here, I wanted to go into the gold market because the gold did something very significant, and it's still doing it. So we want to pay very close attention to gold today. Uh, so we'll take a look at the next one on the DAX, which is the long-term uh, daily chart. And as you can see, we had that uh, butterfly bottom form. Uh, you know, it's pretty much spot on at the 1.618 expansion number. Uh, we had a pretty good rally, but, you know, really not very much. Uh, you know, basically not even 382 of the last high. So whether that means anything or not, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not really sure. The market had a really strong rally yesterday, led by this little puppy right here. Let's bring it up so we can take a look at it. And that is uh, Apple. And we want to look at this Apple because Apple is... Uh, right at this is the daily chart for Apple, and I wanted to uh, to just show you what we're looking at uh, as far as um, you know a longer term picture. Now you notice the Apple has been up uh, just about every well it's been up every day since the solar eclipse. It, even when the market was down big after the um, uh, pseudo missile launch well it wasn't pseudo missile launch but after the missile launch when the market broke badly on Monday night. Uh, this market didn't even back off. I mean, it just kept going up and up and up and up. Now, this it, Apple is approaching what we looking at as far as long-term patterns. If we look at Apple here, and this is a request. I, you know, I'm not involved in Apple at all. Don't even have an iPhone. And you'll notice here that the 1.618 number was 162.91, and we closed at 163.58. So we've gone above the 1.618 expansion of the move from 2015 and 2016. Folks, this market is being being held up by uh, of just a few stocks, 20 stocks in the NASDAQ 100, about 15 stocks in the Dow and about 60 or 70 stocks in the S&P 500. The rest of them do not look that good at all. Uh, I will show you that in just a moment, but um, this is what it's looking like to me, just pretty much like we've done this before. We had this big rally uh, in the S&P, yet the overall market itself did not do anything at all. Let me just give you an example of what we are looking at here. Here is the um, New York Stock Exchange Index. And we're going to put it up so you can see it. It's on an hourly basis here. And we'll take a look at this right here. And we'll be, you'll be seeing this here that uh, we've had this um, uh, little rally here. This is an hourly chart. So you're just looking at a, a two-day action between the 28th and 29th. And what we did yesterday is we made a 61% retracement of the high that we made on the 24th. And if you can imagine, you know, where the NASDAQ is uh, compared to this, uh, it's really, you're looking at, uh, as Basel, Basel would say, Basel, it was, it's a bifurcated market. There's two different ways of looking at this puppy. So it's really telling you a, a, a really largely different story. Now, let's look at the NASDAQ here. By, by the way, realize this is all my opinion, right? I mean, this is just patterns. I don't know anything about the fact that we've had these really good numbers this morning on gross domestic product. We had 3%. I don't think we've been at 3% since uh, Eisenhower was uh, president, but it's been a long time since we've been there. But you'll notice that, uh, you know, since late August, uh, excuse me, late July, We've made a series of lower highs. We had one in the middle of August, right around the 8th, if you'll recall. And then we had another one following that uh, around the uh, 
the 18th, and then we've had this other one that just occurred yesterday. It almost made a perfect ABCD pattern. Uh, that would have taken us to 5905. We got to uh, 5897, uh, so we missed it by just a little bit. So far, we could still make it this morning. It could go even a lot higher, but this is what we're looking at in the NASDAQ. You see, it's a totally different picture than what's really happening with the overall stock market. That, that's that's um, that's that's very, very clear if you look at the, at the big picture. And and if you remember that chart that uh, we got from business uh, from Bloomberg through Business Insider, You'll notice that the stocks that are uh, the advanced decline line is setting right at the um, uh, <laughs> opinion should be factual regular. I don't know what that means, Mr. P. If, if that's a compliment, okay. If it's not a compliment, that's okay, too. <laughs> anyway, this is the New York Stock Exchange of stocks that are above the 200-day moving average. And you see uh, they're ready to go. 50% of the stocks are going to be below the 200-day moving average. That is not a bullish sign. That has happened um, 23 out of 24 times the market has sold off a great deal. Now, if you remember yesterday, we had our good friend Bill Meridian give us a really good rundown of the cycles in the stock market. Uh, it was about as clear as anything I could see. And uh, it looks like there's a very, very strong... Um, what we call uh, bias to the downside. So we'll see if um, if that is in fact going to be the case. We don't know for sure, but if we looked at all these cycles, this is basically um, you know f four or five different cycles that are all coming together with the year seven. And you'll look here. Um, you'll notice that these cycles are turning down. Now, whether you know sometimes they invert, of course, but that's what we're that's what we're watching. That's for sure. By the way, tomorrow is a very important anniversary date. We're going to have a little contest here this morning. What's the importance? We lost someone very special on August 31st, 20 years ago. Does anyone guess who that was? They get a big prize. We'll see. We we got a little judge's ruling here and see if we can get it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. That's very good, dudette. Well, you have to be from the UK to know that, but very good. That's very good. And I don't know who Robert Zink is, but <laughs> okay, let's get on to the next one here and we'll see what's uh, what we're going to be going on. Uh, with the uh, next, we have to talk about gold because gold, I'm going to need a little bit more time on the gold because of the fact that we've had a um, pretty good run up here to this uh, new high and we want to be able to uh, to watch it uh, a little more closely here uh, as we as we go through looking at this now the uh, euro has backed off about 190 pips from the high that's very unusual folks um, the the level of 11850 is very important from the euro standpoint because that's a um, that's a 382 retracement of the of the move that started way back at the 116 level and if we break below that then we'd be looking at something you know more sinister uh, in the euro uh, possibly but you know that's neither here nor there we have to wait to see if that's going to happen. I wanted to, uh, to talk just a little bit here about gasoline futures. Uh, we got a break coming up. We'll try to cover it if we can before the break. But if you look in here at the, at the gasoline futures, you'll notice what happened Sunday night. We had the big jump up. Uh, where it hit that 1.4 expansion. That was at 177. We backed off to a 61% retracement the next day, and then the market just took off and went from 169 to 189. So we'll be right back. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan 
Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now, now. toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, folks, let me uh, put up the chart here of crude oil since we, we talked about uh, uh, gasoline futures. Uh, remember, we had our friend Kyle Cooper from Houston Energy. I don't know the exact number, name of his company. I'm sorry, it, it slips my mind, but uh, he certainly that's his business. And uh, he said that you have to look at each one of these components of the crude oil complex separately because they are dependent upon the refineries that are in the Gulf by a great deal. Most of these refineries, of course, are through that Gulf region. If you've ever seen the, uh, the uh, uh, outline that they have on some of the news programs, you'll see that there's just so many of them that are lined up across there that it's uh, really amazing. And we've had a pretty good run here um, in crude since Sunday night. We went from 166 to, let's say, natural gas gasoline futures, 166 to 189. But you'll notice that once these refiners come online, it most probably will be uh, backed off a little bit. The reason I say that is if we take a look at the crude oil chart that I've just posted into the room, you'll notice that uh, we're in a downtrend in crude oil. We have been since February. We've had three major lower highs all coming in at the 78.6% retracement levels. And now you see that we have a ABCD structure uh, that is forming down here at around the $45 um, dollar and 25 cents. It's about a dollar a barrel from where we are right now. Uh, that uh, should be some support. That's a 61% retracement uh, of the whole move from um, $42 a barrel up to 50.50. Uh, however, if we do break, you know, below this. Uh, these, this 43 level, in other words, if we get down below the 78% uh, level, folks, uh, you're looking at a much 
a stronger ABCD pattern, it's going to take uh, you know crude oil into the uh, high to mid 30s without any trouble at all. And in the long-term weekly chart, you know it could certainly do that. Um, you know, oil's been a, uh, in a really strong bear market here for the last four or five years, ever since we hit $140 a barrel back in 2011. And if you remember at that time that Goldman Sachs came out with their special report uh, saying that uh, crude oil was going to be at $200 a barrel. Hmm. I wonder who wrote that report. Okay, let's move on. And I'm sure he's been promoted because that's what they wanted to say anyway. So what they say and what they do is very important. I've always felt that you watch to see how the markets are reacting to either good news or, bear, or bad news. Because if the market does not go up on good news, it really has only one place to go. And if the market doesn't go down on bad news, it usually has only one place to go. So those are some of the ones uh, that we're watching. Since we're talking about news and markets that are uh, under a great deal of stress, let's, let's talk about something we don't talk about very often here. Uh, but we've had one request from one of our folks here at TFNN, and that's to take a look at the little piggies, live hogs. As you can see, uh, these uh, live hogs for October uh, have broken from 71 to 60 uh, in a matter of about 10 trading days. That's a huge drop, folks. Uh, at that point, we had August hogs that just made a double top up there. October couldn't quite make it. And now uh, where we are this morning, coming in at 60 bucks uh, a pound in the hogs, we're setting at a 1.27 expansion of the April low and a 1.618 expansion of the July low. So this should be uh, what we call the last line of support. This is where the um, uh, the Alamo uh, comes into play because uh, there there's nowhere else to go. Uh, if it goes below here, you know, there's I mean we're down 10 days, so you can get a you know dead cat bounce. But if it doesn't hold that $60 uh, a pound level, that's going to be you know something uh, you know really really sinister. Now you folks, uh, I you know not a farm boy like uh, well I wasn't a farm boy, but I lived out in that area. Uh, one of the things that uh, is important with the hogs, of course, is what they feed them, and that is corn. And if we take a look here at uh, Christmas corn, that's December corn. We'll bring this up here and take a look at it here. Uh, this market has been in pretty much a, a free fall since uh, the July high was made. What's important on this chart, folks, is, is – uh, Look Look at the, the Thunderbolt, that little ABCD pattern with the D pattern down there at the 1.618 expansion. The ABC, the BC swing, was exactly 38%, and then we've come straight down. And the ABC delay is perfect, and it's coming in right at 1.618. So if you wanted to be a farmer, this would be the time to be a farmer because you don't have to risk very much at all. I would say about $0.05. Cents. If the corn gets below the 343 level, you know, we could get back to uh, areas that we haven't seen in uh, many, many years. Um, and that would be, you know, very, very interesting also. There should be a great deal of support at that level, but we'll wait, wait and see if, uh, if we'll see if, if, if that's going to happen. Uh, someone's saying that hogs are already at 57.5 in October. I don't even think they're open yet. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I had as of last night. So we'll <laughs> we'll wait and see. Remember, you have to kiss a lot of frogs before before you find a princess. So, uh, and believe me, I've got the warts to prove it. All right, let's get back to uh, the gold market. That's something that we really want to pay attention to here. Did I cover gold already? No, I did not. Okay, wow. All right, here's where we are in the gold. Let's put this up here and take a quick look at it. Uh, over the past uh, month, we've had one, two, three, four corrections that are between 18 and $20. The one we had yesterday, exactly $20. So this is the fourth one that we've had. The importance of this chart from a technical perspective is the fact that the 78.6% retracement on the weekly chart came in at 13.23, and we're trading at around 13.16, I believe, right now, somewhere around there. If we close below 13.10, uh, to me, that is going to mean this is a potential for a big reversal. And the reason why I say that is uh, we have not had confirmation of a big-time breakout in the uh, 
Gold, gold's only 1313. If, if gold gets below that 1309 level, that's going to be um, uh, what I think is a, a relatively uh, bearish sign short term. And the reason why is after it broke that $20 last night, all it could do was rally to a 382 retracement up to 1319. I know it's a very short term, you know, 15 minute chart, but sometimes that'll give you a, a little bit of a blueprint, a blueprint of what we're looking at. Oh, we got a call from uh, Miami. John, can I help you? Hey, Larry, how are you? I'm good, sir. What can I do for you? Good. Larry, um, I have a target on, on oil, I mean on uh, corn, to 230 um, or in the area. What would that imply? Like, what, what would you think that would be the reason, or, or what do you think would be going on if, if we hit 230? It, it, if we get to 230? Yeah, hmm. I mean, yeah, that's my target, my long-term target on, on the corn. Well, the, this is this going to be pretty cheap feed for the rest of the world, but uh, it's certainly, I, I guess, you know, anything's possible in this type of environment for sure. But uh, that would really be uh, so deflationary that uh, I think there'd have to be something going on to make uh, make corn to get to that level because the cost of production uh, on corn is around 320. And uh, that's what our friend Sim only from Sylvia's Financial had told us. And so we're we're down into this zone here. But you're right, John. There there's also that possibility that these things could cascade. And as you look at this chart, you know it's been a you know a one-way Corrigan you know for, since uh, July, other than that little five-day rally we had at the 382. And going below uh, 340 in corn, you could easily drop another uh, 80 cents to 260. There's no rule, and you could go to 240. You know, that's that's certainly possible. Stay with us, John. We'll be right back, okay? Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. If you you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market safe emerging currency CD from Everbank. This three year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. 
Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, uh, John, are you still there? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, we got John from Miami on the line. We're talking about corn. John, I've posted the long-term chart that I'm looking at, which is the uh, weekly chart for corn and for Christmas corn. And you can see the ABCD structure is here. We're down into that area. Um, we've gone below uh, the B point, which makes that an ABCD pattern. But what I did was I just blew it up looking between C and D to get to that point. And as I get to that area here of uh, 348, uh, I know that if it gets anything below uh, 343, so you only have to risk 250, $250 to see if you're right here because you're right at that 1.618 expansion. But your point was a possibility of 260 corn could easily be seen because if you took the BC swing and multiplied it by 1.618, you would be looking at something that would take you really close to that 260 level. And believe me, these markets, you know, sometimes can certainly go, uh, you know, a lot uh, farther than uh, you might think. One of the things yeah. that could make that happen is the fact that if we had a trade war with China and we knocked off uh, grain shipments, much like we did uh, during uh, Carter's year, uh, years, uh, uh, Carter had an embargo against something. I don't remember what it was, but that caused grain prices to get hit pretty hard. They come back, but during that time, they could easily get down to that level. That would really hurt a lot of farmers, I can tell you that. Mm, okay. Yes. I mean, yeah, that was my, my question. I was wondering what would have to happen because I'm looking at my chart now, and, and actually it was a little lower, like 218, 220 is, is, is where I see it wow. eventually making a, a big, big long-term bottom. That's been over 30 years since we've seen corn at that price. But if it gets there, there's going to be a lot of problems across the grain belt. I can promise you that there should be no problem, um, you know, with that. I would think so. It's good. It's a good point. That's why I think that the risk here is very small. And if I'm wrong, it's going to be very fast, and you'll be out of be out of the farming business real quick. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Larry. Thank hey, thanks for calling in, John. I really appreciate Thank it. You, you bet. Much. Okay, folks, we'll get back here and we'll start to talk about the gold market. Uh, we've hit those uh, levels. I just wanted to bring up one other thing here uh, about the gold that's very interesting. And this comes from one of our friends across the pond over here that does a great deal of time, uh, time analysis with the gold market. And we'll put this up here to let you take a look at it. What he's looking at here uh, is this breakout. Uh, that we extended up to the 1.27 level. This is uh, longer term going back, uh, you know, to last September. And as you'll notice, the, the uh, gold topped in September. And if you'll remember, yesterday we had our good friend uh, Bill Meridian on, and he mentioned that there's a high probability of um, gold topping in the August-September period. So there's a couple of things here to make a uh, case for uh, a possible correction in gold here because we really have not had a correction since July, folks. We've had uh, four $20 corrections, the fourth being this morning, uh, last night. And um, if we get much below 20, then that's the case. If we get below that that line of 1305, uh, that's going to tell us that, that we've broken that, – that should be really strong support at that 1303 to 1305 level. You know, that's pretty much uh, – you know what we're watching here so we got to be able to look at this uh, as a spot to pay very very particular attention to because there's a lot of cycles coming here uh, in September and we want to watch it uh, very very closely because it's a very interesting chart pattern here in the gold by the way uh, yes that is a possible five point reversal Marshall very good you get a gold star for that and um, we'll we'll cover that at another time the um, other question that we had was uh, uh oh this what was it? I wrote it down here. Oh, silver. The silver market and also the platinum market. On this run-up, silver has lost open interest, believe it or not. With that big run-up, there's been a drop in open interest the last couple of days in silver. That's not good for the silver market, folks, because that means the shorts are leaving the market. There's no new buying coming in, so that's a bad sign. Gold, on the other hand, has had a strong um, open interest uh, increase, so that's still good, but the silver has not you know, tagged along. And the same thing with platinum, too. Platinum has not 
tagged along also. So there is a tiny little discrepancy here, but you know, right now the key the key thing to watch is the 1303 level uh, in the gold. If we can hold that, then we've uh, then it's still got a pretty good chance uh, to move. But so far we've held the twenty dollar correction like we've had all the other times, and that makes it uh, makes it look 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 pretty good anyway. So we'll see what happens from here. All righty, let's get on to the next one here. We'll show the platinum here for a second. Um, I don't have it up to date, so I don't want to show it. All right, give me a little second here. Someone had a question about Apple. We already covered that. We covered that. We covered the corn. Did the hogs? Where is the other one? Darn, I had one more here that I wanted to cover. Oh, this was the Dow Jones Transportations. <clears throat> the Dow Jones Transportations uh, we had a question about this from one of the old people that used to watch uh, Richard Russell. And you'll see here that uh, we've had a major top in uh, the transportations in July. We had a little rally ABCD pattern back in, uh, into August the 14th, and now we're, we're starting to come down. And even when the market rallied, the transportations was still, you know, weakening, you know, behind the, uh, the rest of the market. So that's another reason, you know, to pay particular attention to one of these uh, uh, divergences that we have in some of these. Um, the Treasury bonds and Treasury notes, we still believe that uh, we're getting ready to uh, make another leg down. Uh, as you recall, uh, we were watching the Treasury bonds to get up to this 158 um, and change level. Hold on one second here, and I'll post, post this into the room. We haven't, uh, we haven't had that happen yet. Oh, we got a caller, another caller today. This is good. John from Detroit. Hey, good morning, Larry. John. Good morning Detroit. to you. Love your show. Well, thank you very hey, much. I appreciate that. Want to use some of your expertise and insight? You know, when I look at the uh, gold market, we look like we possibly had a short covering rally in gold here. We had a spike up on unusually heavy volume. And I yes. wanted to know, maybe I'm wrong there, but how do you spot short covering in a market like that? That, that's very simple, John. All you have to do is to uh, write this down because everybody can do this for themselves, and it's very simple. You go to www.cme, that's Chicago Mercantile, Mercantile Exchange com, and you'll okay. see right there, it'll tell you data. You just click on data, and then all you have to do is to go where it says volume and open interest, and then you go into the volume and open interest, and you'll see uh, what the net change is on the day. And the, the rule is if the prices go up and open interest drops, that's short covering. That means there's no new buying coming into the market. This is what's happening to silver right now. The price of silver jumped about 35 to 40 cents in a two-day period, and open interest dropped. There was no new buying coming in. There were over 1,700 contracts uh, you know, liquidated yesterday. So that's... Uh, that's that's usually a sign that you know silver's had a problem back in in 2011 when silver was at 49 and gold was at 1900 we were seeing this day after day the short covering i mean it was four or five days in a row where the open interest kept dropping the market was screaming up but the open interest was dropping and that means there was no new buying coming into the market now uh, when we come back from this next break i have a a little um, tablet that I usually post when we talk about this. I'll pull it up from my computer and let you folks look at it. There's four things of how to look at the open interest, and I'll put that in there so that you can watch it. If you don't have it, you know, drop me an email and I'll send it to you. But I'll put this at the break. So thanks for calling in, and I certainly appreciate it. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market-safe emerging currency CD from EverBank. This three-year U.S. dollar-denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. 
So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. EverBank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, Trade LABU or LABD. Directions Daily SP Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have John from Detroit still on the line. Hey, I'm sorry, Larry, to buzz you again, but... Just when you were giving your explanation on how to look up that open interest, my mm -hmm. phone just started going crazy and I lost the call. So if uh, I hang up, could you possibly repeat that info? You had gone to the CME, and once you got there, boom, yep. you just disappeared. So I'm going to hang up and listen on the radio. Oh, Thanks. stay with, stay with me. We can do it together here. You might have another okay. question, so it's not a problem. Are you able to see the TFNN um uh, yeah, I'm on, format. I'm on the site right now, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can see where I have the price and open interest uh, chart yes, lined I up there? Yes, yes. Okay, now basically let's look right now at what we have in gold. We have a rising price and we have a rising open interest. That means the market is strong. Open interest is the number of new players coming into the market. For every buyer, there has to be a seller. So right. that market is strong. On the silver side, we have a rising market, yet we have falling open interest. That means the market is weakening. Their buyers are leaving, the short sellers are leaving the market, and also longs are leaving the market, so it's leaving it vulnerable. Follow me? Okay. So now let's, let's, look, let's look at uh, the falling market with a rising open interest. That's what we're seeing in crude oil. We're seeing open interest increasing in crude oil, and the market is weakening. So that's what you really want to look at. But you, what, you have to be really careful because you really only want to watch – well, this is my opinion, John. You really want to watch this when you're at a real critical time where you think a high or a low is coming in. That's where open interest is the most uh, important. There is a fellow named Steve Breeze, B-R-E-E-S-E. -E -E. He's the master of this. Uh, he has a uh, – a website and a service and stuff for it. Uh, it's a little more over my pay grade to try to understand it. I keep it as, as simple as I possibly can. And the CME certainly gives you the information that you need. But uh, th this is a time where I'm always watching, you know, open interest to see if their new players are not coming into the market. And that's why it's important. Same thing is true here with natural gas. If natural gas is going up and there's not new buying, oh, boy, that thing's going to drop like a rock because uh, that's nothing more than short covering. Does that help? Makes sense. <clears throat> Absolutely, Larry. 
Well, it's very I really simple. really appreciate your show. I no, it's, it's not a problem. Uh, I imagine if you Google open interest, uh, you know, you'll be able to find some more information about it. But it's, you know, it's really quite simple. And the Merck, the CME has a lot of good information uh, about open interest and, you know, how the contracts work and stuff. So it's a good source of uh, information for sure. And just one last uh, question, not on the open interest, but the difference between the gold and the silver. The silver has been lagging. Do you think that the gold market is rallying because of any particular thing, like maybe a North Korea issue? Yesterday they uh, shot, the, or two days ago they shot that missile over Japan yeah, and sure. kind of freaked the market out. It's very, very simple to understand that. Uh, you're, you're leaving the country with some fast assets, right? Right. Mm -hmm. and, and how much does it take to carry 10 ounces of gold versus uh, 100 pounds of silver? <laughs> that, that's the bottom line. You know, so, you know, silver is basically the poor man's gold. I think everybody should have some silver. I right. always recommend the silver rounds. Uh, you know yeah. they, that you know even if they're they go up or down, I think you hold them long term because you know silver is a beautiful metal. The, the coins are absolutely beautiful. They're good for teaching children about uh, you know monetary things, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I just don't think you can go wrong uh, with silver. You know maybe silver goes back to five dollars an ounce. You know you buy more. You know I right, bought some. Right, of my right. sil I still have silver from a dollar forty an ounce, and wow. uh, not a lot, but uh, you know I still have some. So. <laughs> Well, I appreciate it. Again, I really appreciate your insight, Larry. Well, thank you. I really appreciate you letting me know that. Thanks a lot, John. How's everything That's in great. Detroit? Is is it picking up better now? Is it getting uh, is it, is the city getting better? Yeah, the economy here is really good, and uh, you've got a lot of big people, especially Dan Gilbert, the owner of the uh, Quicken Loans and uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers uh -huh. basketball team. Uh -huh. He's buying up every uh, every piece of uh, vacant land or every old building he can in Detroit. And uh, mm -hmm. a lot of companies are moving in for tax purposes. If you swing your company down into Detroit from the suburbs or from out of town, they give you huge tax breaks. So you've got a lot of people moving back downtown. A lot of millennials are moving back downtown. That's the trend all over the country. You know, the kids want to be in the city. So we'll see what happens. We just hope that okay. we don't have another... 1968 event down in Detroit, you know, with all the stuff with Trump oh, and this wow. Antifa, this, yeah. this group that's uh, really causing a lot of trouble. <clears throat> you just yeah, don't well, know what's going to happen here. This is so. true. We, as the old Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times. That that's certainly right. is uh, right. what we have going yeah. on now for sure. <laughs> right, right. I get it. Believe me, I yeah, get it. You bet. Thanks for calling in, John. I well, really appreciate it. thank you again, Larry. You appreciate bet. it. Bye-bye. Yeah. I always have a fondness for Detroit because that was the home of my good friend Mark Douglas. And uh, we'll be uh, going on here to take a look at Platinum. We've had a request to take a look at Platinum to see what it's been doing. It also has had the open interest has not been increasing in the Platinum. But remember, Platinum is a much, much smaller uh, market than, than we have in the uh, – uh, the silver and the gold and stuff. So that's I don't even I haven't traded platinum in years. But let's just take a quick look here at the chart. You'll be able to see it very easily here that we stopped exactly at a 78% retracement yesterday uh, in the copper, which is also uh, indicative of you know a very important level that we hit. Uh, if nothing else. Now, all I need to do now is to find the chart that I just posted, and I believe it should be. Oh, dear. Well, there it is. We've got it. Hold on one second. Here, Here's the platinum. We'll bring this up here to take a quick look at it. By the way, boys and girls, remember we have a holiday on Monday. And um, so the markets will be closed. We'll be back in business. But we have some really big astro things uh, occurring on Tuesday. I believe we have our good friend Norm uh, Winsky is going to be on with us that day. Uh, but we have a Mars and Mercury and Sun conjunction that is uh, really big, as, um, you know, uh, Bill Meridian talked to us about. You know, you have to really, I don't know, you know, sometimes I, you know, I wrote some books in astrology uh, based on these numbers and cycles. But when you get into some of this as esoteric stuff that these guys look at. It's really amazing that how they really uh, keep an eye on uh, uh, some of the things that are happening. I mean, he pretty much had that whole month of August spot on on what was going to happen. So I don't know what's going to happen on September the 4th or 5th, but we ought to pay you know pretty close attention to that. That's something that's pretty good. And also Stan Harley had that, and we've had Shane Smolian on. So some of these guys have, have some pretty good uh, cycle information that we're able to look at. Just looking at these charts, 
uh, you know, like I mentioned before, the overall market looks extremely bearish just because of the New York Stock Exchange Index. That market uh, just does not look very bullish, uh, from my opinion, but it looks like it's got a chance to have legs. Now, I wanted to cover a couple currencies here besides the euro. Let's get let's get on to the Japanese yen here, and we'll take a look at it here. You'll see that uh, we've stopped at this uh, 108 and change level a couple times. We're now trading above the 110 level. We're approaching the highs that we made last week. That tells us that that cycle bottom of 44 uh, trading days has been pretty much uh, spot on. So we need to pay close attention to that because that's about a 8% uh, weighting in the dollar index, but nothing like what the euro is. The euro has the big weighting, and that's the one that needs to be watched you know, very, very uh, carefully uh, from the, the main thing to keep a, a close eye on. Um, the um, one other question that someone asked was about, about the hogs. How do you trade hogs? You trade hogs at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. The margin's about $2,000. Each value is worth $450 a penny. You don't have to risk more than a penny in hogs. Let's see if you're right here. 877 927 6648. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop, The Art of Timing the Trade. Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts, as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to God's country for a workshop about the art of timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the tigers and tigresses for this special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effect, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we are going to take a quick look here uh, at the stock market one more time. 
we'll uh, take a look here at this uh, New York Stock Exchange. It, well, that's, that's the wrong one I wanted to show. I wanted to show the updated one, so give me one second to get it up here, and we will have it ready to go very shortly, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Maybe not as shortly as I – there we go. What I have here on my desktop is about 30 different charts to discuss with you each day with questions that you have. And we want to take a look here at the New York Stock Exchange Index. I imagine we're pretty much where we were yesterday. It should be uh, pretty close to unchanged, right at that 61% retracement. Now, if the market gets really strong today, uh, then we'll be looking at something that could be pretty uh, pretty significant as far as a rally. Because there's a possibility here, folks, the fact that we made that 61% retracement with the Korean missiles on the 28th. If that's the C leg, you're looking at an ABCD structure that would take you all the way back to the uh, August 15th highs, and that would be up around the 119 level in the um, market. That would be up 107 points in the New York Stock Exchange Index. Right now, it's not showing that, but this is what it's looking like on the shorter-term basis. It's setting up uh, relatively well. The only one that is really pushing this up, of course, is the Apple. And uh, well, not Apple. It's a new. It's a Nasdaq, of which Apple is a big component. And of course, there's other components in there that make it go. Also, with Google and and Amazon and all the others. So that's the main thing of, of watching uh, what we're looking at. So asking questions about the flood insurance program, folks. Uh, I I have not heard many good things about flood insurance. I think the problem is they have so many uh, things that uh, disallow certain deductions. But I don't know anything about that, so I don't want to go there. That's way beyond my pay grade. Pay very close attention to the 118.50 level in the euro. That's very, very important. The very important to watch the level of 113.10 in gold. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.